Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 6th of August 2018 and the time has just gone 11.25 British Summer Time. But to be honest, it's been a fairly uh, slow start to the week. Um, what's continued to rumble on in the financial markets is the trade tensions between the United States of America and China. Uh, over the weekend, President Trump stated that the US is winning the trade war against China. And he stated this because it was announced on Friday that the Chinese stock market by by uh, market capitalization is no longer the second largest stock market in the world. Uh, it's not been replaced as Jap- by Japan as the second largest stock market in the world. And given the decline in Chinese equities in recent months, President Trump uh, has, uh, has attributed the trade war and the sanction or the, the tariffs that he's imposed on China and the threat of further tariffs as the, re- as the reason uh, why the United States is winning the trade war against China. And President Trump loves to win. And while he feels he's winning, he's likely to, con- to continue the tough line against Beijing. Um, there's been no other kind of major economic indicators or, or uh, st- stories out this morning, except for uh, quite a dismal set of, uh, of German factory orders. Uh, the, the most recent update show that factory orders in Germany declined by 4%, uh, which is quite significant, uh, seeing as the economists were only expecting a decline of 0.4%. Uh, so much larger than expected drop in German factory orders. This put a lot of pressure on the DAX uh, at, at the beginning of the session, but the market has managed to recover some of, of, the, of the losses. Um, taking a look now at the uh, the week ahead, and the week ahead uh, article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and look under news and analysis, uh, you will find the uh, the week ahead article. So, looking ahead to tomorrow, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia update. Um, no change is, is expected today on policy. Also tomorrow, tomorrow, Intercontinental Hotels have first half figures out. Also tomorrow. Uh, Snap have second quarter numbers out. On Wednesday, we have the trade balance figures from China. Traders, of course, are going to be keeping an eye out on the imports and exports component of this to see how well the Chinese economy is doing, especially in light of the trade spat that the that they that China has with the United States. Wednesday, we also have fourth quarter numbers out from 21st Century Fox. On Thursday, we have first half figures out from Sydney World, and on Friday, we have UK second quarter GDP. Now, taking a look at some of the major markets, uh, starting off with the FTSE 100. Uh, we can see here that the FTSE 100 has broadly been range bound the last number of months. Uh, the, kind of the top end of the range would be in it's just shy of 7,800 to the low end uh, just south of 7,500. Uh, we can see that the market had a very impressive rally between uh, between March and May, and ever since then it's broadly been trading sideways, uh, largely a bit to, to the upside. Um, if you take a look at the, at the ground that was lost between the high of May and the uh, and the low in June, a lot of the ground has been recovered, uh, and we're just about clinging on to the 50 day moving average this blue line here uh, which comes into play um, in a, uh, which comes into play just in around the 7660 7, level uh, I think I managed to hold above that we could look look at retesting the uh, the mid June highs of 7794 and if we go beyond that traders will be looking up towards the 7900 region uh, to be honest it's it's, it's only for take off this low here uh, in late June of 7,482, this price here, because then would actually traders begin to, to begin to get worried, and that could signal further losses. As I mentioned, the German market had a fairly sizable sell-off this morning on the back of those dreadful uh, factory order figures. Uh, take a look now at the price action on the German market. Uh, as we can see here, the German market has been a decent enough uh, push higher uh, between late June and and, uh, and and July. But as you can see, the market has managed to drift lower again, rock, rock well below this red line here, the 200 moving average. And the 200 moving average is a fairly good barometer um, of, of, of market sentiment. And seeing as it's below the 200 moving average, uh, easily below the 30 moving average uh, it's likely it, that's a negative indicator a ne- negative sign and it could point to, uh, to further losses and if while we remain south of this red line here the 30 moving average which comes to play at 12,764 while we remain south of that it's likely that that losses um, we, we, it's likely that sentiment could remain negative and if we do manage to drift low from here we could be looking at targeting 12,500 and notice how we have seen a bit of support in that area recently and if we go south of 12,500, the next level to keep an eye for is this one here on the uh, the, 
indeed the low from the uh, from the 11th of uh, of July at 11,390. And if we go south of there, we could be looking heading back down towards the uh, 12,250 12, area. Uh, it's only if we do to have a sizable move back above the 30 moving average, we should, should then traders actually then start to look to uh, maybe look towards the uh, the, la the late July high of 12,878. And if we go beyond that, the big the big psychological number of 13,000 will then come into play. Uh, take a look now at what's going on on the US markets. The S&P 500 uh, continues to uh, in its upward trend. Um, the S&P 500 has been broadly speaking been in an upward trend since early April. Uh, a fairly good example uh, of an upward trend whereby a series of higher highs and higher lows all the way along. Uh, we can see here that even though we did have a fairly sizable sell-off uh, in, in late July on account of the major decline in Facebook, the market has managed to recover most of those loss losses. We're not too far away from the uh, from the July high, which comes into play at 2,848. And if you go beyond that, um, that level, of traders traders will then be looking out to the January high and the all-time high of 2,877. Anyways, to the downside, my financial support in around the 2,800 region, big psychological number, or perhaps even below that at the 2,791 area. Notice that we did see quite a bit of uh, both resistance and support coming into play from that area not too long ago. Uh, as I mentioned about Facebook, I'll also keep an eye, keep on with the uh, with the tech team. Uh, keep a look at this now. Um, this is the Nasdaq 100. Uh, Nasdaq 100, like I said, had also had a fairly sizable sell-off given the major sell-off that we saw on Facebook not too long ago. But the market has been re recover re recovering, uh, and if it does manage to continue that the in the wider upper trend that it has been in, we could be looking at, at a, a retar retesting 7,500. Uh, any moves to the downside and the Nasdaq 100 may look at finding support in around the 50-day moving average. This blue line here, at set, uh, which comes into play at 7,220. As I said, it's it acted as support a number of occasions in, in uh, recently, so chances are it could act as support again in the near future. Taking a look now at what's going on in the gold market. And the gold market only uh, only uh, last Friday, the, the day of non-farm payrolls for, for in the United States, fell to, uh, to a 12-month low. Fell to a level not seen since July last year, uh, got down to just south of 12.05. It's been in a classic example of a downward trend, uh, series of lower lows and lower highs on the gold market. So the trend is, is very much to the downside. If you did manage to keep uh, driving lower from here, we could be looking at targeting uh, 1,200, a big psychological number big psychological level and uh, if we go south of that we could be looking at the low uh, from, from uh, mid-March last year at uh, 11.95 and if we go south of 11.95 we could be looking heading back down towards 11.80 or sorry apologize apologize 11.79 11.79 uh, was the, the was one the, the kind of reaction low uh, in late January 2017 taking a look now at a couple of currency pairs before I finish things up so the euro has been in a, in a fairly, uh, fairly downward trend versus the uh, the the, uh, the US dollar since April. Lost a lot of ground here. Um, had a fairly decent recovery in June, but if you draw a high, if you draw a, a trend line from the from the high in mid June and tracking the, the tracking the highs throughout uh, July and August, we can see at the market that this that the market for the time being is obeying this trend line resistance. So the market can't really get above this this trend line resistance here, and the pressure is still on the euro to the downside. So, if the if the euro while the euro remains effectively below this trend line uh, here, the, the the high from the from mid June tr tracking the highs in July and August, while it remains south of that trend line, it's likely that, that the out outlook for the euro versus US dollar is going to remain bearish. And there to keep an eye out for will be the one spot fifteen ten region. And if we go sp south of one spot fifteen ten, it could pave pave, pave the way for one fourteen to be targeted. And just to finish things up now on the pound versus the US dollar. The pound versus the US dollar has also been losing ground uh, since, since August, sorry, since April rather. Uh, it's been in a fairly steady downward downward decline. Uh, the updates in Mr. Carney at the back end of last week uh, talking about the, looking at potentially the Bank of England hiking say once a year for the next number of years but he also uh, issued a warning in relation to what the what, what could happen in the UK economy should the the UK leave the Euro European Union without any any deal in place. Notice how uh, today's low has managed to actually take out the most take out the most recent low 
So we're back to, uh, to levels not seen uh, since September 2017 on the pound versus the US dollar. So that gives indication uh, of how negative and you know, bear sentiment is. We're talking you now 10, 11 month lows on the pound versus the US dollar. So the sentiment is, is very much to the downside. If it continues to move lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards 129, or possibly 128. It's only really if you can kind of snap above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, uh, which comes into play at one spot 32.12, uh, because then we actually look to actually try and get a bit of confidence back in the pound versus the US dollar. Notice at least one occasion the 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 50 day moving average did manage to act as resistance, and a couple of occasions it got quite it got close to it. To the fit, it got co close to it. But didn't actually quite get there so the pound is in very much a negative trend uh, in the against the US dollar and even if you do manage to retake the 50 moving average the next day to keep an eye out for will be the mid-July high of one which comes into play at one spot 33.63 and if we go beyond that we could be looking at the the, the early June high of one spot 34.72 any potential resistance levels for the pound should we see a snapback well that's all for me this week thank you very much